Hello, and welcome to What Would Larry Do? I am Dr. Ann, and I'm here with Larry Helwig this morning. Good morning. He's been all excited because it's a Friday. It's coming up to a weekend. Weekend vacation. Yay. <laughs> vacay, vacay, yes. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I wish I had the energy you did right now. I feel, I feel good because I'm just thinking forward, forward thinking here. That's what it is. Good. Uh, nice, relaxed weekend, do some fun things, you know, it's going to be good. Good. Well, we have a special guest with us here today. We have Carrie Poling. She is the National Director of Education for Lightwave. She has been teaching on light therapy for the past 20 years, and she has sat on several advisory boards as well dealing with light therapy. So welcome, Carrie. Well, thank you. I'm excited to be here, uh, even though it's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good way to start out the day. Get yes. your little dose of Larry. Yes. You, you can go straight from here to happy hour if you like. All right. This sounds like a great day. It's getting better and better. <laughs> All right. So we're here to talk about LED today. So I know we've done a podcast on this in the past, but there's been a few things that have changed. And as we were talking about on our last episode, just as, you know, time moves on, technology advances, things change. And so we wanted to bring you back on and discuss some of the things that have been going on and have you educate us a little bit on it. But for those listeners who haven't tuned in before, the first thing is, what is an LED therapy? Well, LED therapy is known by a couple different names. It's really actually a whole science behind it. So a lot of people think, oh, red light, all red lights created equal. You see red light, that's what we're looking for. If I get some red light, you see the little handhelds now that are out. You see mm -hmm. the little face panels. You see the stand-up panels. There's so much that's inundated the market. But light therapy is ultimately where different wavelengths or colors of light can affect your cells in a positive manner. So it can give you more oxygenation, more energy. Um, it can really help to heal the body in a way that we've never seen before. So understanding what light can do for you is, is unbelievable. Well, the very fact that there are so many other companies coming out with something, you yes. know, whether it's a take home, whether it's a panel, whatever it is, should be telling the world that, hey, they're, they're onto something. The, you know, light therapy works. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, people wouldn't be investing money in it like they are in manufacturers. And it may be a little confusing uh, in the market because some things are really not going to do as much as others. But, uh, but the very fact that more and more companies are getting behind it and standing behind it validates something you've been preaching for 20 years. So, you know, I, I think that's, uh, from that standpoint, it's very good. No, it's excellent. I used to teach, you know, about what is it? Now I'm teaching how do you find an effective system? So no longer am I trying to, you know, get people on board like, hey, you should be doing this red light. Now it's like, let's look at what makes an effective red light treatment. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's definitely changed for me as well. So is red light therapy the same thing as photomodulation or are they different? Well, that's a great question. So some companies will refer to the technology as photo. Uh, photobiomodulation and other companies will just refer to red light. Red light is basically the layman's term of the science. So photobiomodulation okay. is stimulating yourselves with light. So it's a whole science behind it, just like we have the science of gravity and different things. There's been a lot of study and research mm -hmm. done over the past, gosh, 60 years on photobiomodulation. But um, that really is, if you're wanting to know studies, find the scientific information, uh, you can Google or go to Google Scholar, and if you put in photobiomodulation, you'll see a ton more information and more of the clinical data mm -hmm. and what the scientific parameters are rather than red light, which will give you all the advertisements and yeah. all of the stuff that people are pushing. So this way you could actually research the technology. Wasn't it the NASA study some time ago that kind of really kicked things off in a positive way? Yeah, in the 1980s, that's when yeah. they were sending people to outer space. They were becoming injured and they weren't healing. And so they were looking at what's different in, because that was kind of during the space race. What's mm -hmm. different and what's happening when we are in outer space? If we get a paper cut, we get a bruise, why aren't we healing? Right. And so they found that different colors of light were actually very responsible for the wound healing process. And we all know you can't go and lay in sunlight for hours on end because there's also colors or wavelengths of light in the UV spectrum that can be very detrimental to your cellular health. Yep. 
So well, in the same way too, where now all of this information is coming out with um, some of the blue light that comes from like LEDs or not LED, but from phone screens and computer screens, and because it's lacking red and infrared, how damaging it's becoming to the eyes. Yeah, and not just the eyes. I mean, all across the board, your yeah. cells and and in general. Yeah. Um, We've always known from the beginning, 20 years ago, when they started using blue light, that blue light kills bacteria. Mm -hmm. So primarily, we've never used blue light to, for cellular health and for healing. Mm -hmm. We use it for acne to kill bacteria. But uh, as a company and, and LightWave, what we've always known and what we've seen in the studies and what's been studied is you must always follow the blue light with, with the, the red. red light. And so when we first go in, we, we go in and we kill the bacteria, now we need to start the healing process. And yep. that's why it's a, a two-step process. And so some of these companies that are mixing the colors or having red and blue at the same time, it's a two-step process. You can't just do it all simultaneously. It's one followed right. by the other, and that's the reason. Well, when you follow the science, usually it comes out right, but uh, not everybody. There's shortcuts. Yeah. People like shortcuts. Well, so and I've been asked the questions like, why would you shortcut it then? If you yeah. know you have blue light followed by red light, if I use a very low dose, it would be 30 minutes of blue followed by 30 minutes of red, which would mean an hour in the office, Right. which, or even, you know, if you're doing an at-home device, it's a very long time to commit every time you go to do light therapy. Yeah. yeah. So there are parameters that have to be followed in order to get an effective treatment, which is now what I'm teaching more than what is light therapy. So speaking of, what makes a professional grade LED different from some of these at-home LED? Well, and that's the thing is, is that because you don't get something that you can see instantaneously, there's not something because it's working on a cellular level, it's very hard to determine, hey, did that work? Did that not work? Mm -hmm. And so one of the parameters that I always look for is you should have that relaxed feeling after light therapy yeah. where you just want to sleep because yeah. your cells are going to work while you're awake and they're doing changes within the body. If you don't have a very relaxed state with like an endorphin release, because that's one of the things it does, makes you feel good, makes you feel yeah. happy. If you don't immediately feel that after light therapy, that's an easy way to determine whether you're getting a good dose. Ah. But these at-home devices or some of these um, masks that are out there, they really are not following the scientific parameters. Okay. And it's unfortunate because then what we're having to do is going back and train and saying, okay, what makes a professional device? Well, we're meeting the minimum dosage, and that's what it is. You can calculate the dosage. You need at least 30 milliwatts of power coming out of these light devices, mm -hmm. and then you can't exceed 200 milliwatts. So if you start thinking about it, and I love the analogy of if you're going to bake a cake, you can't have the oven set at 50 degrees or 100 degrees and hope that you could just go for four hours and get that cake <laughs> baked. <laughs> It's just not going to happen. If you have a low, low, low dosage... You're going to have an easy bake oven cake. Yes, and it's going to be dry and nasty. I mean, you could leave it in overnight. <laughs> or, yeah, or whatever it is. And you also can't exceed 200 milliwatts of power. So you can't turn the oven up and go, hey, you know what? I like to bake this cake in 10 minutes. Let's turn it to 700 degrees or 500 <laughs> degrees and put it in there. Yeah. You're going to burn the crap out of it. So there is a nice... Uh, I mean, there is definitely parameters that need to be followed scientifically. Mm -hmm. And so I always say it's like that 325 to 350 when we go to bake a cake. It's kind of the same thing. You have to be between 30 milliwatts of power up to 200 milliwatts. So the closer you are to 30 milliwatts of power, the longer you're going to be under there. Mm -hmm. The closer you are to 200, the shorter the treatment time okay. and the shorter number of treatments you're going to need. But it's just like that. You can't just have a low dose, some of these at-home devices and say, oh, well, let's just put it on the skin tissue and hope that we get where we need to be. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. Okay. Yep. Nope. That our, makes a lot of our sense. Our time's time. Yes. So absolutely it, matters. It, it really works out. So like now competitors uh, that are in the medical arena, mm -hmm. uh, you know, devil's advocate, what, what makes yours better? Well, there's different um, FDA clearances as well. There's over-the-counter, which uh, you know, a lot of different companies are over the counter because they want to sell direct to consumer as well as professionals like, and call it a professional device. And like LED bulbs and things like that, right? Yes. So LED bulbs in general, there's different bulbs. There's um, uh, super luminous flush mount LED bulbs, and then there's the bulbous ones. So the ones that are uh, flush mount can give more even coverage, more even power, and they are much, much more powerful than the bulbous ones that you see. So what happens with a bulbous bulb is light goes in all different directions. 
the flush mount, they move those little photons or light particles move in a forward motion. Okay. So our whole goal is get as many of those little photons or light particles into the body because that's energy to yeah. your cells. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that makes sense. And one of the biggest things is if you get energy to the cells, you get more oxygen to the cells. Yeah. More oxygen to the cells means more healthy cells, which means you're in a better state. Yeah. Well, more blood flow as well, mm -hmm. right? So yes. hence more oxygen. And, that's yeah, and, and the whole thing, you know, like angiogenesis, where you're trying to create more blood flow, more, mm -hmm. more vessels with lots of things that we do, um, I kind of go in that direction. Well, I know they've been doing for hair, you know, more blood flow, the whole thing. So if you do that, tissue seems to just get better. Brings more oxygen in, more nutrients in, takes waste out. Mm -hmm. Likelihood of uh, faster healing time is enhanced. Yeah, so. over 24 different positive results can happen when you yeah. create that oxygen flow. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think the bed, you know, we now have that, we, we a couple years ago came out with that full encapsulation, the yeah. whole bed. Which, of course, we have, and we, yeah. I will be in this weekend. I yeah, so let's talk bed. a little bit about that LED capsule, and yeah. we have some photos and things that we can throw up. So tell us what um, kind of brought forth this LED capsule and the idea behind it, and Obviously, we've been doing it for face for years, but now you guys have, there's a picture of the Envy. Yeah, and that's our latest and greatest Envy. So that's our newest bed. We came out with a bed a couple years ago, and obviously, as technology enhances and improves, we found ways to make it even better. Mm -hmm. So um, this one has 24,000 uh, LEDs in it. Oh, wow. uh, it has red and infrared. And the reason it kind of evolved from the face to the bed and what you're seeing there is initially it was concerning like, hey, can we go ahead and affect all cells at once? Or okay. is there going to be uh, some kind of problem with your lymphatics and getting all the toxicity out? And we found that we can keep up as long as we have a good system and a good bed. Mm -hmm. So um, what we're looking there at doing is the first thing that happens is it releases nitric oxide. So these little energy particles go into the body. They kick out nitric oxide from the cell receptor sites. So that little energy particle kicks out the nitric oxide. Well, nitric oxide, when it hits your, your, your blood, it's a vasodilator. Yep. So it's a huge vasodilator. So now all of a sudden, all that toxicity starts to come out of the body, and it allows more oxygen to flow into the cells. So you get an immediate response, and more oxygen to the cells can help brain function. It can help how you feel. It can help how you sleep. There are so many changes that start to occur once we oxygenate those cells and we get the nitric oxide into the bloodstream. So that's what we're looking for immediately following that, that, that result, I mean, from getting in the bed. So um, it can enhance uh, how you train. It can enhance for an, um, someone who's an athlete. It can help with someone who's been in, in an accident and they need to heal or someone who's had surgery. So, uh, or they've gone and done an aggressive treatment with Larry. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's going to help heal, uh, and it can bring that healing time down by about 60%. And so you have different colors that do different things. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so, you know, we do a lot of body sculpting and work like that where, you know, the muscle is involved. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, but, and, and you also have patients who have a little arthritis in the joints and things like that. So different wavelength will affect different things, yes? Yeah, so different colors have that definite, different effect on the body. So red, uh, I think most people have learned from the media that it's going to help with anti-aging. Mm -hmm. So how does it do that? It stimulates the production of collagen elasticity, you know, firms and tightens. Mm -hmm. And then the infrared is I feel like the unknown, the untapped resource that a lot of people don't know about because they haven't advertised it as much, but that infrared light, which it, when you look at it, it doesn't have a color associated with it. It just gives off a little bit of heat or thermal energy. That infrared light makes our cells more permeable, which means anything you put on the body post infrared light is going to be absorbed that much easier, that much mm. quicker. It's going to have a huge uptake. It also is going to produce mast cells, which is our wound healing response yep. cells. It penetrates deeper into the body as well than the red. So there's a lot of benefits that are associated with the infrared, not just in the pain realm, but in anti-aging and, and wellness realm as well. And a lot of companies, infrared is a little more expensive to use. We'll skip the infrared and they'll just use red. But the two, one followed by the other, is such an incredible treatment for wound healing and anti-aging and all of the things, maximizing your cellular benefits. 
I always feel like um, if I've done something, had a workout, did something, that either my joints hurt or my muscle hurts or there's mm -hmm. soreness, that is awesome for that. You know, the yeah. infrared just um, seems to make a big difference. Yeah, and I was going to say, one of the things I feel like that is starting to become a little bit more popular are infrared saunas. Yeah, so that the big difference, and that's a good question, is like, you know, what is the difference between yeah. an infrared sauna and what you're doing here? So as one is... As well as like red lights, because there's difference in red lights out there too. Yes. So let's talk about both of those. So let's start with the infrared. So infrared, when you look at an infrared sauna, that's far infrared. So there is different wavelengths of light in the light mm -hmm. spectrum. So far infrared is way down here on the spectrum. So when you look at what it can do and how can it affect cells and, and what kind of change it has, it's very minimal in comparison to near infrared, mm -hmm. which near infrared is right next to the different wavelengths and colors of light. So the amount of energy associated with it. So far infrared and the saunas have a little bit of energy, which is why you can stay in there for a long period of time and just get that minimal change. And not that it doesn't work, it's very effective, but not yeah. nearly as effective as a near infrared that's going to go in and create those mast cells immediately in a high dosage. So think yeah. of it as a much, much higher dosage of what you're getting and what it can do for the body. Mm -hmm. And then when you look at red light, red light, you really need to between, be between a 630 and 650 in order to get that, that what we call a biphasic dose response. You want to go ahead and make the body respond to that extra energy that's being put in. Mm, okay. So that's how it works is you have to get enough energy in there so that the body creates a response. If you don't, it's kind of like if you go in the sun and you're only there for two minutes and you don't see a tan. <laughs> okay. So, you know, you're not getting a response from the body because it's such a the small dose. amount, the dosage. But if you go and I spend, you know, two hours in the sun and I fall asleep, I'm not going to be able to walk for a week because <laughs> I'm going to be burned and look like a lobster from head to toe. You're going to look like John Candy on vacation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Exactly. Then he comes out with the noxema all over. <laughs> and we know it's going to affect it in that yeah. way. So it's just really figuring out. And that's what I think the past 20 years has been, is what is a good dosage? Well, and, and those, um, uh, we teach laser physics. And the whole thing is about wavelength. The shorter the wavelength, the more powerful the, the wavelength is. And so, you know, the red light needs to do something that's a much shorter, you can visi visibly see it, much shorter wavelength than near infrared. And then near infrared is much shorter than far infrared. So when you're looking at wavelengths of light, how much energy automatically comes just based on the wavelength, not counting how much power and everything else you give it. It's just the wavelength alone has inherent power associated with it. So... Those are the wavelengths that make the biggest difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, is there anything that patients can do to enhance the results of the red light? Yes. So what they have found in uh, over time and through studies is that there are different antioxidants you can utilize post-LED that are very, very effective at neutralizing any extra um, what we call uh, reactive oxygen species, which is an extra oxygen molecule that can be left over when new cells are created. Like free radicals. Yeah. So yeah. when you create a new cell and you're young, that's great. The body has a great garbage system and it goes and cleans it up. What happens is, is that as we get older, and when I say older, past the age of 25, yeah. on a cellular level, that's what <laughs> old is. Wow. You were trumping Larry on that one. He always tells people 30 and I tell people 35. Guess what, Larry? That's it's I have to take it down. Well, I do say your peak is 15, and at age 16, you're dying. Yeah. You know? So by age 30, it's over. So yeah. I can now that's, take it to 25. It's that slippery slope. At 25, that's when, uh, on a cellular level, we're supposed to have children, procreate, make babies. That's our optimal cellular health is right there at 25. And anything past 25, you're on the that ugly cliff falling off or slippery slope. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, oh, man. you know, when we talk about cellular health and we talk about what that looks like and we say, okay, you know, past the age of 25, how do we keep an optimal cellular health? We have to really look at the dosage and we start looking at, at what we're doing and, and how to keep that. So antioxidants and what you can do there, they found that green tea in particular, Yeah. and we hear matcha green tea, right? Yeah. Why is that? Because it has certain properties in it that can help with those free radicals. Yeah. So what happens when we're young and we make a cell is we have extra oxygen molecule left over, the body cleans it up, no problem. When we're 35, 40, 45, we run out and we do all these great treatments, we then create the, make the body create new cells, right. 
we don't have a good garbage system to clean up those extra and those extra mm -hmm. free radicals that have been created. So if you can in your first couple treatments, whether it's doing a, a laser or whether it's doing LED light therapy, whatever it is where you're creating new cells or exercising, you know, these people run out and say, well, now I'm 40, I'm going to run out and start exercising now. What happens is you don't have that garbage uh, group ready to clean up those extra free radicals. Yeah. But applying a green tea topically, um, and we have our hydrating recovery gel in our ABI skincare line, and that is phenomenal at creating a you know, cleaning up those free radicals. Yeah, that's one of my favorite products. Yeah, but that's that. why it's developed and that's why yeah. it's designed is because now all of a sudden it's neutralizing any extra oxygen molecules. And if we don't neutralize them, they can start to tear down those new cells. Mm -hmm. So we will go ahead and enhance the treatment. We'll make the treatment better, prolong the treatment by applying that green tea post light therapy or post aggressive treatments. Yeah. That's a low cost product that oh, is amazing. It's my pa favorite. Yeah, patients love it. Uh, we use it with all kinds of different treatments. Yeah. Uh, post treatment, it's fa fabulous. It's the number one thing I put people on because it doesn't matter for me if their skin is dry or oily, they're typically a candidate. Yeah. Um, it's easy to sell them on because it's not very expensive, it's very effective. Everybody tends to love the feel of it. Mm -hmm. And for me, with us being here in the desert, I feel like it helps with that hydration because that aloe base that you guys have in it versus some of the other products can almost be, you know, just too oily for their skin out here. Or other things when they really need that water base yeah, that's going just, in it. Absolutely. Depending on what they've got going on. And a lot of people think, oh, we'll all consume a large amount of, of green tea and that will be sufficient. And that's where there's a, a misunderstanding. And while, it, yes, it will help with the internal organs, Skin is the last organ that's going to... I have that conversation bad. at least once a week with people about collagen. Right. They're like, if I take collagen, it's going to help my skin. And I'm like, well... <laughs> well, the rest of the body, if your skin is showing damage and your yeah. skin is showing that it needs something, imagine what your internal organs look like. I know. And they're going to steal it way before. First, yes. That's what I said. So. It, your body has to break the collagen down, mm -hmm. transfer the little amino acids over the intestinal lining, and then your body decides what to do with those. Right. And it doesn't mean it's going to even put it back together as collagen. It might. Right. I don't know. But yeah, I have that conversation with people all the time. I love collagen as like a protein powder. I take it every day, but I don't take it for my skin. Right. I just like it as the form of protein. But that's because of the amino acids I'm getting from it that my body needs for 80 million different you know things going on in there. But yeah, that's the same thing. I, ha I have that conversation every day. And I'm like, you have to still put stuff on top as well as take stuff internally because then they work together in harmony. Right, and you need to make sure what you're putting on top actually can make it in through the skin. Yes, absolutely, because otherwise it's just a layer sitting on top of there. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. And that's what we've learned about hyaluronic acid is yes. it's a great layer that's going to mm -hmm. bind water to the skin, but it doesn't actually penetrate the tissue. Otherwise, we would just smear it on our lips and we'd have these <laughs> big, beautiful lips, you know. <laughs> but that doesn't work like that. You have to actually inject it. And the reason is because it's such a large molecule. Or you have to microneedle holes and create large yes. channels to push it down. Yes, yes. <laughs> and even in that case, is it's still going to be, a, in comparison to what you inject, yeah. is going to be such a... Minimal. Yes. Yeah, yes. I agree. But so. that's why when people do microneedlings with hyaluronic acid at two to four weeks out, their skin has like a beautiful glow to it Yes, because it's more hydrated. And that's why that's like a popular like pre-event procedure to do because your skin, once it's more hydrated, just looks better. Fine lines and wrinkles are temporarily plumped in and everything like that where it's a temporary effect, but it's a great pre-event procedure to boost that hydration. Well, and bringing that up, I mean, that's one of the reasons that people will do a single light therapy session yeah. is because you are going to create more hydration to that tissue yeah. immediately because when you kick that nitric oxide out, allow more oxygen to mm -hmm. flow, you also allow more nutrients and more hydration mm -hmm. to that tissue. So a lot of people will say, what is the first thing I'll see post-LED? And that is generally what most people initially notice is more hydration to the skin tissue. And bringing that up though, if you do multiple sessions of light therapy, as a professional skincare provider, you may need to change their skincare routine because if they're on something that's a heavy emollient mm -hmm. or a heavy moisturizer and they do six to eight treatments of light therapy, I've had people say, well, the light therapy is making them oily. No, the product you had them on because their skin wasn't performing correctly yes. yeah. is what needs to change. So we need to have a lighter uh, uh, moisturizer for them. Mm -hmm. 
yep. on our <clears throat> on our resurfacing patients and patients that get fairly aggressive treatments. We love getting into uh, LED every other day, you know, increase the blood flow, increase the turnover, all that type of stuff. Big big change in in how quickly they uh, they heal. Yeah. yeah. So if as we're talking about light therapy, are there any side effects that people have to be worried about? The biggest thing is, is that you, when you're looking at light therapy, it's affecting on a cellular level. It's just looking to see how you're feeling overall. So some contraindications, pregnancy hasn't been tested formally. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I did it with two of the three kids that I have, and now they're 24, you know, 19. And they don't have a 17. second head growing or anything? No extra arms, no extra legs. Their cognitive function, they still seem with it. I mean, for a teenager and the younger <laughs> one. But, you know, we can't so. judge between what the ages of, uh, now I say like 11 and 30. Yeah, you can't just, really judge cognitive function because no, they make stupid decisions. No, and then you're wondering, <laughs> wow, that's... But then it's funny because then you get to be older and you're like, wow, I've made some really stupid decisions too. So you really only have a little window of where you are functionally, optimally, you know, with uh. your brain cells. But um, so some of the other things is if you have normal sensitivity to sunlight and you have a hard time with that, then light therapy is probably not something that you should should be doing. Um, okay. So if you're, you have albinism or different things where, where sunlight in general is going to affect you negatively. Uh, the other things you can look for is prolonged redness. So if you have a sunburn looking effect after light therapy, uh, then you've got too high of a dose. So ah, if, okay. if your skin is, and when I say not immediately following, because your skin will be red from all the extra blood flow, but if we're looking 24 to 36 hours later and you're still really, really red, it's nothing negative that's happening. It's just that you can't metabolize that extra energy. And so the next time you come in, I would do a lower dose treatment on you okay. and start out at a lower dose. And uh, the other thing like rosacea, somebody who has rosacea, increasing vasodilation, it's going to be really red following light therapy. Yeah. And they can stay that way for up to 24 hours. But usually by the third treatment, yeah. that redness that they deal with on a daily basis substantially decreases. Yeah. So those are just some concerns to have. But as far as light therapy, the biggest thing we see is no, you're, you're not getting a good treatment. You're standing in front of a panel that really doesn't do anything. And then you're flipping around and doing the backside and, and hoping for a good outcome when it doesn't meet the scientific parameters of putting out enough energy. Yeah. All right. So, now, I, I mean, at that point, you just stand by the car tail lights and have your husband hit the brake and hope for a good treatment. <laughs> you know, I mean, if you're looking at some of these panels that I see on the market, it's like, well, that really is equivalent to your car tail lights, honey, hit the brakes. I'm going to do my red light. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. Just the visual of that. I would love to be driving down my neighborhood and seeing people stand behind their cars with their face in the brake lights. <laughs> you know, and that's just it. I mean, with some I'm of these things I'm just getting my the treatment. Market, yeah. I feel Dream better already. Yeah. yeah, something. Oh, it's the exhaust that I'm breathing. <laughs> yeah. A little lightheaded. <laughs> I'm getting a little buzz of some kind. Yeah, so you really should have that endorphin release feel really good. Like you want to just take a nap and you sleep better and cognitive mm -hmm. function improves. That's a true light therapy session. Oh, yeah. I know. That's why I have a hard time doing it when I'm at work sometimes because I don't want to get back up and go back to work. Yes. It's like it either has to be at the end of the day. Or I have to set my timer because I will be asleep, you know, after the, because the infrared is, you know, there's no light to it. So it's the red is bright first and it goes infrared and you're like out. Mm -hmm. I mean. Yeah. Me too. I sleep. Uh, it takes probably a minute. And you're out. And I'm out. And yeah. I, I, I get so comfortable in there and I. I sleep and then the it takes two time. hours before we see him again. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I have Hashimoto's. And so for me, when I when it flares up and it's really bad, getting into that bed is like a godsend. Yeah. You know, I'll be doing some of these trade shows that I go to and different things and really pushing my body. And that's when I see kind of everything declines. But I can mm -hmm. climb in there and I, you know, I want to be in there 24 seven because it just feels so good. So you should oh, notice yeah. an actual change in the body. Yeah. No, absolutely. Now, other than talking about possibly some prolonged redness in certain cases, is there any downtime that patients have to be worried about with LED therapy? No, and that's one of the great things about mm -hmm. it is you have no downtime. You don't have to have anything you know, specific that you're going to put on the skin other than the green tea when you go out, but you don't mm -hmm. have to avoid sunlight. It works on all skin types. That's the other thing is, you know, do, does it see color? No, it's, you know, it, it definitely doesn't. It sees cells. Yeah. And so that's the big thing that it looks at is it doesn't matter what your skin type is. It's going to affect you. It's going to have a good positive outcome if you're getting the scientific parameters met. Yeah. Now so. that's excellent, you know, because those are always questions that patients have for us. 
besides, you know, how expensive is a treatment, they want to know what their downtime is going to be. Is it painful? Mm -hmm. You know, all these things. These are all concerns of patients. And that's what makes LED such a great option is not only is it pretty much safe for every skin type out there, but there's no downtime, there's no pain, there's no discomfort. Like it, it just is, it's a great adjunct to any um, treatment protocol. Well, that yeah. we're designing for patients and health you're just looking at optimal health mm -hmm. so that's how how do we get in optimal cellular health and it doesn't matter some of these plastic surgeons that we work with if you're going to be lifting and tightening and cutting they still are doing light therapy because they want to mm -hmm. work on skin that is healthy yeah before they tear it down or cut it or nip it or tuck it or you know if you want more of an instantaneous change yes we can do all these lasers and aggressive treatments which a lot of us you know we live in a society where we want instant gratification but we could do it safer, we can do it more effectively because we're working with, with yeah. healthy tissue. Yep, absolutely. Fabulous. Good. I think I have asked most of the questions that I wanted to know. Do you have any anything else you want to talk um, about in regard to LED or skincare? I think care? with the bed, I mean, that's the biggest thing is with our bed, the, some of the things that I love about our new bed. Okay, in, yeah. In comparison to the older bed we had, when I say older, it's only a couple years old, but the new design is fantastic because with the old design, it was much, much heavier. Um, you had to have someone come in and physically install it. You had to have a technician fly out and, and put the bed wherever it is. Now it's almost like a plug and play. So you get it in two pieces shipped to you. You can put it two little couple pieces together. You don't have to have an installer. You don't have to wait for them. If you decide you want to move it, it's, it can be moved from one room to the next. It can be put uh, in New York. We have some beds on the upper levels, so it's very easy to transport. It's very light. Um, it's brighter. It's more effective. We cool the LEDs, so the treatment itself is more effective. So we're learning how to maximize uh, that treatment. And so the bed that used to be a little cumbersome, the one you guys have, yeah. It's a good, I mean, it's a great bed, but to move that sucker would be unbelievable. It's yeah. huge. Yeah. yeah. And so the components, just like your phones and everything else, have become smaller, yeah. more compact. The power supplies, all those things are much, much smaller. The LEDs have remained the same. They're just working more efficiently now, so we drive them a little harder than we did in the previous ones. But I think it's great that you can move them, you can change them. You know, it stays a little cooler in there, everything about it. Um, and it has this fabulous, great big screen for my eyesight, which the smaller screen was a little tough to see. So <laughs> I'm really excited that I can see the new screen because I'm in denial that I have vision issues <laughs> as I'm aging. I am too. So uh, I'm those are it. some things that I really like. And then obviously, as technology has, has come a long way, we see, you know, there there's no comparison between an LED, the Lightwave NV bed and people are taking and putting red bulbs in tanning beds and hoping that it works or putting up panels and hanging them on the back of a door and you standing in front of them there just is no comparison to the effects you get and the change you get so right. and if you're unsure go out and do an envy treatment and then go and do one of these other red light bulb beds and it's or stand by your car tail lights you know <laughs> It's just not the same. Now, is this something that patients are able to purchase and have in their own home, or does this have to be in a medical office? So that's a great question. So with our bed and with our technology, we are FDA um, cleared as a prescription device. So our device is prescription cleared on, on our LightWave system. Okay. So our LightWave system is prescription cleared. So that means that if someone at home wanted to have one in their facility, and we do have patients and people that have them in their homes mm -hmm. uh, if they want to help with the anti-aging and with slowing down the aging process, they have to have it prescribed by a professional. Okay. So they could come to you and they could say, hey, Larry, you know what? I really want a bed. You could see if the need was there, you can write that prescription for them and they can go ahead and they can get that bed. So it's definitely not an over-the-counter device. Um, we are not looking at at somebody just doing it willy-nilly. We want to make sure, that, like I said, it's not going to create problems, but we want to make sure that we maximize the benefits that are there. Yeah. So they can go to any one of their professionals that offer the LightWave, and they can get that prescribed for their at-home use. Okay. Yeah. So that's they, awesome. That's how they would do it. So they wouldn't be able to call us directly and just order one or go online on, and just order one. They would need to get it. Uh, through, right. Yeah, through a professional. And when we say professional, any kind of skincare licensed professional can do that for them. Okay. Does not have to be a doctor, doesn't have to be a nurse practitioner. Okay. So it can be something as simple as an esthetician, um, which is also licensed. So. Yeah, absolutely. That's excellent. Well, we've had um, a relationship with your company, Lightwave, and, and you guys for 
many years now, we, uh, we had a dermatologist call me and kind of ask a lot of embarrassing questions like why we didn't have an LED system like Lightwave in our office considering all the stuff we did. And he went on to talk about the NASA study and all the different benefits and all that. And so that was the beginning of us talking to you. And, and uh, you brought a system in. It was a, a panel system. And we used that for uh, about a week, and the staff wouldn't let it leave. And uh, they all loved it. And uh, so that was the beginning of our relationship, oh, I don't know, many, many years ago. And now we have a number of these, and we, we do use them all the time. Yeah, daily. And yeah, yeah, every, you know, it, it's constantly, the, these devices are in use. And people love the benefits they get from it. So anyway, and the fact that you guys continue to update and upgrade the technology as you learn more and you do more, like you have now with the capsule, I mean, I think that's fantastic. And and you know how to combine it with skincare, like like we talked about. So mm -hmm. we're very happy. And so if there's any offices out there and, and you have any questions, I'm sure they will be happy to help you. But you can call our office, and we're happy to talk <laughs> about it because we've been using it for many years now, and we, we have multiple systems. We love them. So anyway, it's all yeah. good. Yeah, and I love how you guys have really, you know, incorporated it into all the uh, aggressive treatments that you do. I mean, really, I think when we developed that relationship years and years ago, you know, you were definitely all about how aggressive can we be. And I will never forget one of the things you said to me is I said, hey, this can decrease the recovery time by about 60%. And you said, or we can be more aggressive and be safer about it. And I was like, well, that was a perspective I hadn't considered. And so instead you're like, well, we don't need to decrease the downtime. We just need to be safer. And we now can be more aggressive. And I said, well, that's, that's definitely a Larry statement. And so I love that you've incorporated it and helped, you know, to maximize that and show us ways that we can incorporate that with aggressive treatment. So I yeah. think your clinic has done phenomenal job in your school at edu educating people how to, to use the two together. We love it. Yeah, we do. <laughs> All right. Well, good. Well, I think we're getting ready to wrap up here. Any last words of advice or information on LED for our listeners? It's just really making sure you know what you're getting. So, uh, you know, you can't expect that you're going to get a professional treatment from an at-home device. Yeah. It just is not the same. And if you're not feeling rejuvenated and, like I said, have that that relaxation and that feeling of well-being and you're not seeing some kind of change after a single session doing it, um, then you really need to, to re-evaluate what you're utilizing. So make sure you're at a minimum 30 milliwatts of power and people go, well, how do I know if it's 30 milliwatts? If your manufacturer isn't telling you the power of it, then it's kind of like saying, well, how do I know if I'm at you know, 325 degrees for an oven? It should be very obvious where your <laughs> parameters are. So that's just all I can say is making sure you're getting a good device that works effectively. Good. Right. Any last words of advice, Larry? Have a great weekend. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> great. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Carrie. And thank you for you guys all tuning in. And we'll see you next time. Sounds Bye. great. Bye.